So, the HD60 Pro just dropped by Elgato Gaming, and you want to know if you should get it, or if you should stick with your original HD60, or just stick with your Elgato that you have in general. And the reason why I'm not talking about any other product, because literally no other product will ever match up to an Elgato, unless it adapts some of its features, such as flashback, I don't know what they call it, it's basically where you're always recording and you can always record a segment no matter how long ago it was up to two hours although mine usually goes to about three hours I know sometimes people say that it actually cuts off at two hours exactly mine has went up to two hours and 50 minutes right in that time but who's gonna really record back that far so let's actually get into this video the HD 60 Pro let's go ahead and talk about the prices of the both uh, so the HD 60 Pro is $200 while the HD60 comes in at about 150 to 160 I know on their site it says $180, but everyone knows you can go to Amazon and pick one up for about 150 160 uh, 140 if you actually get, or 120 if you get lucky. I've seen it as low as 120 and at that time I was thinking about picking it up and, um, you know, selling it back on eBay for about 130 making some money, but I didn't. But let's talk about this HD60 Pro and what's it, what it is all about, what the hype is about the HD60 Pro. So, first off, let me tell you what it is. It is a capture card that instead of actually being a physical, it is a physical object, but you can't really touch it that much. Once you install it into your computer, it's pretty much there for life and installing it is through PCI Express Slot and some that's a drawback in my opinion uh, I know the big fad now is to have Express Slot capture cards because it's supposedly so much better I know it's faster than USB you get be better read and write speeds and it's PCI is honestly just an all-around good slot for anything for USB for adding lights, for anything that you want for your computer, PCI is usually the way to go. So let's talk about why this comes with its $200 price tag. Because so far, all I'm seeing are drawbacks. I'm seeing that you can't take it to your friend's house. If you have a laptop, forget it. And you have to pretty much take off, take off a panel of your computer, install it. Hopefully you do it right. Hopefully you don't touch your motherboard and shot exists. Shotic, static shock it and uh, just fry your motherboard because I don't know about you but if you do not build your computer if you don't know how to build a computer I pretty much say don't open up the panel because the slightest bit of electricity anything it could be your pants rubbing or you your hand rubbing your pants and just getting a little bit of a charge and it just transferring over to the motherboard for the entire thing to be destroyed that's the only reason why i'm saying not to get this i'm let me finish so the hd60 and that's the original the one the one that i have pretty much comes with the same features except you can actually pick it up you can use it if you want to use it at home you can use it at home if you want to use it on a desktop laptop pretty much anything that you want to use it on you can and that's something else you can use the elgato hd60 on mac so if you're a mac user and you love editing videos on mac go ahead and forget about the hd60 pro because unless you have one of the older mac computers that actually has accessible H, um, accessible PCI slots then you um, that, that would be the only way you can do it except you can only there's actually system requirements to this which there was with the HD60 because this is a 1080p 60 frame per second capture card and there has to be some system requirements so you need Windows 7 or later I don't know who's still on XP so it's definitely not for Mac you need an i5 processor just to be able to record and or something comparable you can have an AMD and to use the stream command you have to have an i7 or higher so this is really processor heavy so if you do not have a good processor stay away from this next it requires four gigabytes of RAM that does not mean it uses four gigabytes of RAM but it can go up to four gigabytes of RAM but I don't really ever see this thing going above one gig or half a gig at that and obviously you need internet connection so this really is just for people that I would say this is the target audience 
whoever wants to record from their actual computer and does not want to use a RAM killing process such as other recorders that are built within computers, uh, a program that you run to record. And basically all you'd have to do is just run an HDMI cable from the back of your monitor down to your computer, back up to your monitor, and then you would have it. Or actually, let's see here, from your computer to the PCI Express slot, and then from the slot back to your monitor. So that's what you'd have to do, and that would be probably the reason why if I were to buy this, is the reason why I would buy it. So in the end, I do not recommend this product just because it has zero flexibility. You put it in your computer and that's it, and if you mess up and you fry your motherboard, then you're just out of luck. You're gonna have to buy another computer and your HD60 will not work on your laptop. So hopefully this explained this for you. Hopefully you guys have made a decision. Like I said, I'm all for the HD60, not the Pro. Cheaper, better, more flexible, more friendly, and that's just my opinion so if you guys actually do want the pro you want to plug it into the back of your computer by all means get it but if you're someone like me that likes to go over to friends houses and bring my xbox bring my laptop and record on the fly then maybe you should buy both but hopefully you guys like this video i'm out day 51 51 days till black ops 3 can't wait hype peace